Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. In the past week, we've had a, a number of uh, illuminating and rather disturbing insights into the attitudes of this government concerning the rule of law and indeed concerning rules in general. The first episode related to the Northern Ireland Protocol, where the government has introduced a bill which will allow it to disapply large elements of the protocol. Uh, now, it's interesting to compare the attitude of the government to the Northern Ireland Protocol to its attitude to the Internal Market Bill last year. It accepted last year that the Internal Market Bill uh, might lead to limited and specific breaking of international law. Uh, this time, they've decided to put much more in the way of um, breaking of international law into the bill uh, and insisted that it isn't taking place. It's a marvellous example of now you see it, now you don't. It's not up to the United Kingdom unilaterally to rewrite the terms of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Its um, justification for doing so is that of overriding necessity, genuine necessity, I think they call it. Uh, but if that were so, then they would have invoked Article 16 before now. Um, they would be moving much more quickly than they are in order to bring in legislation. And it's perfectly clear that um, all that's happening is that an attempt is being made, uh, one, to placate the DUP in, in Northern Ireland, and two, to browbeat the European Union. Uh, the European Union's collective brow, I think, is uh, broad enough to, um, to bear uh, any pressure that the British government may want to put on it. My fear is that as long as Boris Johnson is the prime minister of this country, the Northern Ireland Protocol will continue to be a bone of contention between the United Kingdom, the European Union and the government in Dublin. The second episode, which um, showed uh, uh, an interesting or disconcerting uh, approach to legal matters, uh, was the issue of Rwanda, of the deportations, uh, which the government uh, unsuccessfully attempted to carry out early, earlier this week. The government says it believes that these deportations are, are legal, although the United Nations disagrees. But what I found particularly disconcerting um, were the views uh, attributed to Boris Johnson uh, that those lawyers who uh, represented the individuals who might otherwise have been deported to Rwanda, um, that these lawyers were abetting criminal gangs. That wasn't a view shared by Lord Reed of the Supreme Court. Um, but nevertheless, it goes back to the idea um, that there's such a thing as judges, activists, judges and lawyers who are enemies of the people. It was um, striking that the um, uh, that the law officers of Barrett, Boris Johnson's cabinet didn't attempt to, um, to um, support uh, and to justify the action of their colleagues in representing vulnerable people um, at risk of, of deportation. Uh, there's a, a further aspect of this, which is a European aspect. Uh, the European Convention on Human Rights was invoked by some of those people um, wanting to prevent their, their deportation. Um, Boris Johnson appears to be playing with the idea that it may be possible for the United Kingdom to renounce the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, if that happened, uh, then that would be something that would be a, a, a death blow um, to the Northern, to the um, Good Friday Agreement, uh, at the centre of which, or one of the central planks of which, is that people in Northern Ireland should have access um, to the European Court of, of Human Rights. Worth stressing, of course, that the European Court of Human Rights is a completely different organisation from the European Union. The third episode this week, which uh, has given us an, an insight into um, uh, the mentality of, the, of this government, and, and particularly Boris Johnson, is the resignation of Lord Geit, um, the so-called ethics um, advisor um, to uh, the Prime Minister. Um, many people think that Lord Geit should perhaps have re resigned a long time ago. Uh, he made the unforgettable argument earlier in the year um, that he didn't advise the Prime Minister um, on how he should react to Partygate um, for fear the advice might not be taken and that would bring the um, Office of Ethics Advisor into disrepute. Um, this is a world that has turned upside down when such an argument could be put forward um, seriously and um, taken seriously by, by some listeners. Um, the point of having an independent ethics advisor is that he or she gives some welcome advice um, and hopes to stop unethical behaviour rather than um, simply to acquiesce in it. 
all these three episodes um, bespeak to me um, a, a dysfunctional political society, a society which has politically lost its way, which is unable to distinguish between truth and falsehood, between honesty and dishonesty. And, and I see uh, the heart of that uh, as being the Brexit campaign of 2016 uh, and what followed. In 2016, the Brexit campaign was one on the basis of lies about the National Health Service, about Turkey, about how they needed us more, more than we needed them, uh, about continued access to the single market. Um, and interestingly, this um, uh, nonsense, um, which won the referendum in 2016, um, has to be sustained um, by claims that the European Union bullied the United Kingdom into the TCA, um, that the Northern Ireland Protocol is, is an attempt to bring about um, Irish unification by the back door. Um, the, the claims that um, trivial um, uh, trade agreements with faraway countries um, somehow are, are great benefits of, of Brexit. Um, perhaps the most striking example of this uh, mendacity is the repeated claim uh, that if we had remained in the European Union, then we would have been unable to roll out as quickly as we did the, the anti-COVID vaccines. Um, I, it seems to me impossible um, that a, the major issue of British politics, which is Brexit, could be brought about in the way of mendacity and, and fantasy that it did uh, and sustained by further mendacity and, and, and fantasy without that having a, a enormous deleterious and demoralizing effect uh, upon the British body politic. Um, Federal Trust is conducting a, a, a study led by Andrew Blick in which we'll be looking at um, the possibilities of rejoining the European Union. Of course, there are economic and political um, arguments, powerful arguments in favour of joining the European Union. Um, but I think the most powerful argument is the intellectual and moral one. Um, Brexit is a, 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 a blight um, which is destroying our, our political society in, in its values and its uh, personal and, um, eco and political coherence. Boris Johnson is the perfect example, both in his personal and political personality um, of this trend. If we allow this blight to continue unchecked, we may find that when we want to check it in year, a year's time, five years time, 10 years time, it may be too late. There may be already irreparable damage being done by Brexit to our body politic. We can't simply acquiesce in that.